Here we go, Rock Billy Boogie by Johnny Burnett and the Rock and Roll Trio. Released in 1956 on the self-titled studio album Johnny Burnett and the Rock and Roll Trio, it includes many other classic rockabilly tunes that have become staples of the genre and have been covered by many rock bands over the years, from the Beatles to the Yardbirds, Zeppelin, Fleetwood Mac, Aerosmith, and Stray Cats, of course. And the list goes on and on. And even with all those heavy hitters covering their tunes, I feel the rock and roll trio doesn't really get the praise it deserves. So with that said, let's get into it. It's based around a 1-4-5 chord progression in a 12-bar blues format in the key of G, coming in strong with this riff. Now the intro progression is four bars on the one or the G, then two bars on the C, and then another two bars on the G, two bars on the D, and then back to the G for another two bars. Now this first chorus plays around the entire progression and it does the same thing at the end after the final solo. So here is that first chorus. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Then the verse comes in on the one, and then we go to the four, then there's a stop on the one, and then we go back into the chorus, but it starts on the four instead of the one. So it makes this tune a little bit different. I'll play it for you so you can get an idea of what it sounds and feels like. Now with all of that, you have the structure of the tune, and the solos are over a standard 145 GCD. But one thing that makes this song a little different is that the solos start on the previous progression coming out of the chorus. So here's the first solo. Now we'll break that down a little bit. And don't forget you can download the tablature for free with a link in the description box below. Okay, at the beginning here, it starts coming out of the chorus at the end of the verse. Then from the D to the E to the F sharp, and then it's chromatic from there, all the way up to the C sharp. And you go into this little bending rhythm, and the first time, he does it three times. It sounds like he's kind of pulling off from the C sharp to the C to the B down to the G. And then he does it four times the next time. And then three times again. Then three times. Then G to B flat to C. Then two bends, a half and then a full. And then a pre-bend twice. Or it could be pre-bend, and then a slide up and a pull off. Really up to you on how you want to play it. And then down beats, one, two, three. Kind of sounds like that open E is droning a little bit in there. Then walk up a G major scale with a little slide to the eighth fret. Sounds like a little trill or a hammer on or something going on in there. Then a bend. Then one more bend to the G, to an open E, G and a D, and an open E, and the G and E here again. So. So that one was probably the more complicated of the three. The second one goes like this.
Here we have the solo starting on this double octave thing, which is part of what gave the trio its unique sound and the unique distortion, which was apparently achieved by loosening a preamp tube in the back of the amplifier. And right here, it's just the same note. He's just playing a rhythm on the high G. Now it doesn't sound like he's sliding up like a Chuck Berry kind of thing. I don't really hear a slide in there. It sounds like it's just the same note. And that's when we go into the four. And this next part, you bend the sixth fret just a little bit. Basically just a run down a blues scale. Kind of a rake down for the B flat. So it's going down an octave. Basically just down a major scale there. And now the final solo and the end. Now for this solo, you can hear most of it takes place on the low strings, the E and the A, until we get to the turnaround. So before we go into that third solo, going into the chorus, you can hear there's some guitar riffs going on in the background. And from what I can tell, this is what he's playing. Then one of these. So it's the G, and then you're hammering on with the B flat to the B natural. And then you can kind of hear this over the five chord, almost like he's playing the melody a little bit, but not exactly. And then right into that third solo. So right here on the C, it bounces back and forth. the G here, it sounds like there's a quick slide from the C down to the B flat. And then a slide back up to the C. Now we get into the one final riff of the end of the solo. Now real quick, the end. Coming out of the third solo, it goes back into the chorus, but it goes into the longer structure, like in the beginning of the song, then into the ending riff. You can play that last G with your thumb too if you want. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, share the video around, leave a comment in the comment section below. That kind of stuff really helps the channel and the algorithm. And you can click that notification bell to let you know when new videos drop. And like a lot of these videos, this one was selected by you guys. So if there are any tunes you would like me to go over, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to join us for our live stream hangout every Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, where we chat about music, guitars, gear, and have some fun. And you can help support the channel now by becoming a member. For as little as $2.99 a month, it gives you access to exclusive content, status updates, and more. You can also do a one-time donation by clicking the thanks button on any video. I put all the info in the description box below. So that'll do it for this lesson. Thank you guys again. Have a good one, and we'll see you next time.